So, good morning, everybody, and welcome to my presentation in uh, at the GLA Summit about our Jenkins Levy plugin. So, let's start. My name is Matthias Kubli. I'm the founder and owner of Cubes. Um, we do automated test systems to ensure the quality of our customer products. But to ensure the quality in, uh, in our software development, we are always looking for uh, good processes. And for this, we use continuous integration. And that's the reason why we implemented all these plugins, which I want to uh, show you now. So my background is in software engineering and electronics. I'm a lab architect, testing architect, and uh, CPI. Yo, how does it come that we implemented these Jenkins plugins? So I'm using Jenkins now since more than 10 years. And I was always looking for a standardized, generic, and easy way to use continuous integration in LabVIEW development, as we have it in all the other languages like C Sharp, .NET, Java. There are plenty of tools and a very smooth integration, but this wasn't here for, for LabVIEW. So we tried almost everything. We tried communicating with batch files. We tried LabVIEW code to automate LabVIEW ID. We tried the combination of batch files and LabVIEW code. We tried to uh, do in .NET some code to, to control the LabVIEW ID. And uh, some years ago, a few years ago, this LabVIEW CLI came up from Wiresmith. And with this, it was like uh, a starting point uh, to think about uh, a proper integration into this Jenkins, because this was a good base to start with. And I think a little, maybe I think a year later, this NI command line interface for Levy came up from National Instruments directly, and this was then the base to start with the proper integration so that we can use Jenkins directly to integrate with this uh, command line interface. So what does it mean, LabVIEW Jenkins plugin, or what is Jenkins plugin? So a plugin for Jenkins extends the functionality of Jenkins. That means it hooks up in the menus and helps the user uh, to configure or whatever in Jenkins, to make a configuration in Jenkins or whatever you want. So at the end, it's a piece of code in Jenkins which uses this NICLA functionality. It can start, it can stop, and uh, you don't have to fight with all the command lines in this. Um, you can download it. Sorry, it was too fast. You can download this um, Jenkins plugins under the link on our homepage. It's free of use. Um, you have to register with your email address only because uh, it's only because we want to send you some information if we make an update or a new plugin or, or updating functionality on it. So we don't use your email for any other things. And weird stuff so if you download this plugin and install it in jenkins i don't have to explain how jenkins works i think everybody here know how jenkins works or how jenkins will be installed so if you installed uh, this plugin you have to you have to configure this let you plugin first so that means you have to tell jenkins where your um, LabVIEW executable, where your LabVIEW ID is, is located, and on which port you want to uh, communicate, communicate with uh, your installation. So you can see here a screenshot of one um, configuration of one LabVIEW executable. You can give it a name 
with this name, we use this name later when we set up a job to build. Uh, you can hear, so you can configure different or as many as many Levy versions as you want. The NI CLI uh, command line interface supports LabVIEW installations down to 2014. So you can install almost every version in between 2021 and 2014. But uh, I don't want to do all the theoretic stuff, so we jump directly into a project, and I will show you how how the Jenkins um, plugins integrate directly into the Jenkins. So for this, so for this to. To show you a small demo, I have set up um, a small project with just one main VI and a build specification. Your projects can have more than one build specification, but it should be show only the basics here. And for this reason, we have set up this small project. This project is under uh, source control in our DevOps with Git. So we use Git in the background, but you can use SVN or Mercurial as well. So it doesn't matter um, which source code management system you use. So we, what we want to do is we want to check out on our build system, we want to check out this source code and we want to build this application. So for this, I set up uh, a simple freestyle project in test end and i can i will show you how we have to configure this here so this is the top uh, general section um, which you which we use to set up the, the project what we have to do here is I restrict this build to a specific build node or to a specific label. We have many build nodes and some of them have LabVIEW 2018 installed, which because the project is based on LabVIEW 2018. So that's the reason that I want only to build on, on an agent with LabVIEW 2018 installed. Then here it's my Git repository. We check this project out. We check the master branch out. And then if I want to do um, my build specification, if I want to run my build specification with this plugin, this plugin integrates very smoothly here. I can I get different steps which I can use, like let you analyze it, execute build step. I want to execute my build step. So for this. <clears throat> this configuration window pops up. I can select here my version, which I set up before. So LabVIEW 2018, 32 bits. I need to define my project path. My project path is directly in the base. A folder of my checkout. So I just type in here GLA. So I want to build the build target my computer and the build specification. I can leave it empty. That means that all build specification will be built, or I can have it um, directly. Uh, or I can select just one um, build specification. So I leave it empty, and then it will run all of them. I can save. I can build now. Just wait a second. So 
Okay, all my changed. I can check in the console output now, just for me as uh, if it's finished, or if it's if it's properly run. It is run because it is passing, but I can see here from my uh, command line interface, which is running on the agent, I get I get this information back that it has built all the stuff. So. To show you more about all these different steps, I prepared a whole um, project as we do it normally, so that I don't have to type in all the stuff. What we do here, that's all the basic thing. We have here more than just one build step. As first, I have this um version information let you version information so that means let version information that means that i can update a build revision so i can make different build revisions depending on on my build machine i can also select if i want to have the a debug build or if i have a normal build so the second step that i'm doing here it's this let you execute build step that we have seen before. And as a third one, I do the let you analyzer uh, stuff. I want to do my I want to do a static code analysis of my of my code before I send it to my customers. Um, about the questions, I think I response later to all these questions. Is that fine? All right, good. <laughs> yes, um, let you analyze. So I, the idea is to, to analyze the code before um, we send the, the executable or the, the product to our customers. So I need for that just a VI analyzer configuration file in my repository which um, has all the information about which tests we want to run and uh, which VIs we want to test. And we can start it here in this plugin as well. So as well, we have to select uh, the version that we want to use to run the analyzer. We have the analyzer configuration file. And at the end, we end up with the report. And the report is properly parsed by another post build action. So there is this record compiler warnings and static analysis results um, plugin, which is able with our plugin to interpret all these results. So we have to select the tool here. There are many tools of different um, programming languages and tools to check. And there is another with our plugin, there is this VI analyzer um, tool, which is registered here, which helps us to um, check for all these errors. Yes, and then I can run it here. Now it does a little bit more, it takes a little bit more time. You can check the results and we will see here we have now this VI analyzer uh, icon and we can see here we have eight warnings. I can jump in and see what the warnings are. They are here in this history graph. I can see which, uh, if they are new or if they are high potential, if they are normal or low severity. And down here, I will see what error, um, what error were found with the VI analyzer. So I can do, otherwise I will answer some 
some questions right now because then I have the overview over all the questions. Can build revision be updated by Gitex? Yes, it can. But um, the build revision in Levio is uh, like a numeric. And uh, yeah, if you have, um, if you can access the, the Git tag by, uh, by a variable, you can give the variable to, uh, to this tool as well, if Jenkins will support that. And a VI analyzer can break the pipeline if you want. I can show you that. Um, if you set up the VI analyzer, there is an advanced. I checked here the checkbox, test fails don't break the build. If I disable this, and if I have uh, test fails like uh, with a high severity or errors with a high severity, it will break, it will stop here. So, but then it's better uh, if you do it before as first of all the tests. So then we making this levy analyzer test, if there are any test fails, the pipeline will break there. Um, Creating an analyzer uh, file, it's very simple. Just go to tools, um, VI analyzer, analyze VIs. Start with a new analyzer task. Add a top level VI or folder, sorry. I will take this folder. Why are the tests aren't appearing here? Where are my tests? <laughs> okay, let's load uh, the other one. Okay, but yeah, to make uh, this config file, it's very easy. Just add your items to analyze here. Select your tests, define your tests, and then create, um, press the save button. And then you can store this analyzer file wherever you want. And uh, the best is to have it in the project on the source code revision or on the source code control, then you can use it all the time from these plugins. Jenkins builds on, on different servers here. Sorry for uh, the question from Alex. Um, we have this master installation where just Jenkins runs, but doesn't do anything, it just uh, loads the test or makes the load balancing. And then we have different agents on which we can build a uh, LabVIEW because these are very generic and we can start more or less to uh, build bigger or smaller applications or different applications. So we can build many applications in the same time. And yes, there is an option to run functional tests. You can run um, a just a VI or a VI as you want. I will show the next slide here. So what is supported in these actions or what are supported actions in this Jenkins uh, plugin? So we can start and launch the LabVIEW analyzer. 
we can execute the build step, we can do a mass compile, we can quit the application if that is needed on the build agent, sometimes it's needed. Um, we can have this run custom command. This is a, case, a custom command which has to uh, which has to depends on this on this NICLI uh, format, or we can just run a specific VI that we have that we implemented. So, for your question, yes. Um, you can run every VI, you can run a functional test VI if you want that. And uh, the last um, action is this version information to set a specific version or revision on the uh, executable or packages or whatever you build. It doesn't matter. And yeah, the question was in the, in the chat already so better using a pipe pipeline script so what it's the reason behind i think or not only i but the idea is that jenkins should configure itself so and uh, we call this as well uh, infrastructure as a code that means we have this build script which uses jenkins to see what he has to do and this build script is also on the version control. And at the end, we can also do different build processes depending on a specific branch. So we can build a main branch other than just a feature branch. I will show you that. So this plugin is also pipeline um, ready, Jenkins pipeline ready. We use the same um, project here. I prepared a pipeline script that looks like this. It's a very basic pipeline script. It's more or less the same as I did before. So I have this stage analyze source code. I define on which node it should run or on which label. So then Jenkins can choose itself, but I point to a specific um, agent and then I have these steps like this analyzer step from this plugin which analyzes the um, project I have these record issues where I record all um, the results and then as next I have a compilation stage where I can compile the application and here it's this alpha version uh, step which updates the revision and you can see here I using um, different variables to update um, the revisions so I have the possibility to to um, use different variables which I can set or which Jenkins provides like this build number or maybe some uh, Git variables as well. <clears throat> and then I execute the build step. And this is special here, or this is uh, an update in here by this. I stashing my results or I stashing my output from this build step because I want to uh, archiving uh, the executable at the end. So there is another stage, a third stage, in which I archive this artifact so that it's easily download. Or sometimes we also publish it to a SharePoint directly from, from our clients or, or on a system link in the package repository from system link as well if we um, build some driver updates and stuff like this. So this is the pipeline script which uses Jenkins to configure itself. I will show you this. Mm. So for this, I have to add this Jenkins file in my repository. I have to commit this.
and now we can tell Jenkins that there is a <clears throat> that there is a pipeline that we want to build. So I show you the whole process. I want to do a multi-branch pipeline. There is already one. So the only thing here is I have to tell Jenkins where it has to uh, check out its kit. Oh. Let me copy the path from here. So then build configuration is done by a Jenkins file. The path or the name of the file is Jenkins file. And that's it. I can save it. What it does now, it's checking all or the whole Git repository and checks if there is a branch with Jenkins files in it. And he found one. There is this branch feature GLA, and it started to build already. So it archived all the stuff, and it looks like it has done anything. It has analyzed the source code, it has compiled the application, archived um, the result. Here we have these artifacts that we have archived now, and we have as well this VI analyzer warning. They pop up um, when I click the link here, or when I run, I think it has to run more than two or three times so that it will pop up here on the main page. Yes. So, I quickly check the questions if there are some. Yes, pipelines. How do you handle dependencies to VI packages? Yes, there is a good question. This is a good question. Question. There are. Um, yeah, they are, we use it in different ways. So most of our packages are done in NI packages. So we use the any package manager. And this package manager is very easily um, to automate directly with the, with the command line uh, script. So we can update packages and install packages dependently on the build that we want to start. So most of our projects check for us, check for these specific packages that we need before we build on this build node and install it or update it or downgrade it to the specific version. And then we build on the build node. Um, we don't use VI packages. So we repack most of the drivers that we can use it like this because it's easier for us to handle just one tool. So to rephrase, uh, yes, you don't have to care about command line arguments, passing, and stuff like this. This uh, Jenkins plugin will do all this for you. You don't. You can forget all the parameters on the command line tool. Just use this uh, um, plugin for this. Yeah. Dependent LabVIEW modules, uh, PPLs. So we don't have 
many pipelines or dependent pipelines. We try to um, build all out of one pipeline script. So we have some projects which, which are based on many different PPLs, uh, which have to be built in a specific order. And we organize this all in our um, um, pipeline scripts. Yeah, OK. So that's the part of this. Oh, sorry. I have another um, image. I got this from a customer which uses Jenkins in these combinations a lot with all this pipeline stuff. And you can see here you have all these parallelized uh, tasks which are running um, parallel on, on different nodes just to have a quicker result um, because you don't want to wait for an hour or two just to build the whole pipeline. And for this, you can parallelize, parallelize all the stuff in the pipeline, just as an idea and the response to uh, questions here. Yeah, what should be next? This is a question which I want to discuss with you. Um, we have two other um, plugins which we use just internally. The one I was telling about is this deploy packages directly to system link package repos so that we can uh, integrate system link directly on, on our build nodes and push packages uh, to package repo. And the other one which we are using is um, a um, test and sequence file analyzer that you can see all the results from uh, sequence file analyzer as I showed you from the static code analyzer from Levy analyzer. But these are not released now because they are not stable enough to, to pu publish. But I want to know from your side if you have some ideas which we can take and uh, implement which which you need or which you think it's it's a good idea to to release yes what's about unit test and i Karaya? um we use cry a lot but for this we just run a specific a specific vi to run it, and then we parse the, the, the JUnit file back into Jenkins. So that's the easy way. I was always looking for a generic plugin, um, and I, or we, you know, the idea was not to implement this deep into a specific um, testing tool because there are at least three of them. So the idea was just to have a step which is able to run just uh, whatever you want. And then it's a basic step in Jenkins to, um, to read in the, the, the JUnit file and interpret. Yeah. Are there some other ideas or questions about? Yes, if you run test and analyzer, um, you need to have an environment in your uh, under source code control. <laughs> test and deployment build, well, can be an idea to automate this as well, yes. Are you using it, Sri? Yeah, <laughs> it's like a diva. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes not. 
that's the reason why I I don't use it. I try to use uh, any packages to and use environments, and then I can pack the whole environment. Can you do FPGA builds? No. Well, you can start with just running a, a specific VI. You can start your FPGA build. But if it's a build specification, then you can run it. Then you can execute it. But it's not, I haven't tested it with the FPGAs. What do you mean with MGI solution? You mean the MGI solution explorer? Yes. Yeah. This should also be possible. You can run it over a specific VI. Yeah. Thanks, Jörg. Yeah. I'm not the FPGA pro here. Yes. Yeah. So from my side, it took me a little bit longer than the seven minutes as I prepared. <laughs> But yeah, are there some other questions now? Otherwise, just drop me an email and ask me whatever you want or download it and try it out and please give me feedback. Um, yes, download. Here is the link to download. Yes. Thanks, everybody. And then have a nice day. Enjoy the rest of all the sessions and uh, the whole GLA. Thank you. Bye.